in paradise, not in a crap hole, okay, but in paradise, that this thing is going to get better and it's going to turn around for the decent, upright people out there, those that are willing to share and to get along with their fellow human beings, that, are, that want the same things for other people that they want for themselves, their friends and family, okay, hey, your heart's pure. You're going to see good. I can promise you. God can't lie. And these are promises that are held out, man. That's what I want. Never a dull moment. Eternity, remember, because a lot of people say, oh, live and let die and all. I, I get it. If this is all I had to look forward to, I get it, man. I'm done. I'll just take a good long nap and I'm out of here. You know what I mean? I can see it. I understand people wanting to, you know, waltz off this theater. Right. I get that. I get it. You know, I would never recommend anybody take their own lives. I, I, I Just pray hard, man. God will give you relief. He'll give you everything you need to continue surviving and thriving. He can make, he can change your life and blow your mind it, 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 how much. It'll, it'll just freak you out because he's a good God and he loves you. He loves you as much as you might feel unlovable. I mean, we all feel unlovable sometimes, unlikable. We feel like demons sometimes, for God's sake, the way that we can be rebellious. We all indulge in different vices and, and, and forms of escapism and you know, so listen, we've, we've all got our, our issues. We're all sinners, okay? And we can all feel pretty darn small. But just remember how loved we are, okay? Tap into that. Tap into that love we all need, okay? We need that, that understanding that only he can give us and that love and that comfort, okay? That only he can understand. And he can only give us that that love nobody else we can't expect any human being to do that for us he's a jealous god he jealously desires his spirit to dwell within us to understand that everybody else on the face of the earth is only just a human but he is the one that knows loves and understands us the way we need to be known loved and understood that can give us and wants to give us the wherewithal to not only cope contend and carry on but to really be joyful and free in knowing and truly believing and changing our perception into being victorious over evil and knowing that eventually, no matter how dark it gets before the dawn, that the dawn is coming, that there really is. It's not your just imagination or a figment of your imagination. It's not a mirage. There really is a light at the end of the tunnel, and that light is the light of truth of God and goodness coming upon humanity, a decent humanity. And it's going to turn around. It's going to get better for the righteous, believe me. And it's not because the politicians got a change of hearts. It's because God forced his way into this thing, into this mix. He interceded. He intervened on our behalf, working through the decent, upright people, just regular, everyday people like you and I. Okay, we may think of ourselves not much, but we have great power. We all have great power to affect change. A drop in the bucket. One drop, you convince somebody else to be a drop in the bucket. Remember, you can only do what you can do. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. So you can try to convince him to be a drop in the bucket. Do something. Speak out. Be somebody. Pray to God. Say, you're not sure? Well, then pray. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not telling you. I'm not going to change your mind and heart. That's your relation with God. He, he's going to give you the glory and the credit for doing good things. He's the one that needs to acknowledge that your heart is pure and, and that you know, you're putting it to work and you're proving the, your faith and belief in God and man, and you're proving it with your good deeds, that's your fruit. So put it into action. Anyhow, let's see, we had some horrific series of bombings in Sri Lanka, and we're talking about well over 300 people uh, killed, and uh, what about all the horrific maimings? I mean, you tell me that Satan doesn't have a big influence in this world still, and I'll tell you, you don't, you're delusional. You don't know what the hell you're talking That's satanic. They're bombing their own relatives, folks. They don't know who... I, I, this is insanity. Absolute, utter insanity in your face. This is going on. We had a, uh, a terrible tiger uh, attack in uh, the, the zookeeper in Pennsylvania. That was awful. They've got to use a lot more caution around these animals. Um, luckily, the woman wasn't killed. But, uh, you know, it hurt her pretty bad. I can't imagine having giant tiger claws go through my flesh. That would be pretty rough. 
A woman was nearly killed in San Francisco by a uh, subway. She got caught in the door. Yeah, preventable, this kind of stuff. And with the technology available today, this, this sort of thing shouldn't be happening. But remember, you know, this business about minimum wage is something else that I just can't get away from because, like I said, it's a two-way street. So wages could have gone from $1 an hour and 65 approximately to $0.50 cents an hour and be worth more. But the way it stands now, to not give commensurate proportionally equivalent cost of living adjustments to minimum wage workers is the same as giving them pay cuts. So, yes, I'm, a pay, I'm opposed to uh, perpetual pay decreases to the workers. That's normalizing. Slavery. Okay, do you understand how that is? That's incrementally, gradually normalizing, validating, legitimizing slavery right under our noses. And I don't hear anybody talking like me. But that's that's what it is, my friends. I mean, I hate to think that I'm smarter than the old smartest guy in the world, but for God's sake, you understand the math. It's math. It's not conjecture. It's not speculation. It's not my opinion. It's math. So mathematically speaking, if a minimum wage worker's cost of living goes up and they don't get a commensurate cost of living adjustment, then you could say that if their cost of living stayed steady and their wages went down, the effect would be identical. Do you understand what I'm saying? But if their cost of living goes up and they don't get a cost of living adjustment, it's just like that too. The wages went down or there you could say, well, the wages stayed the same and the cost of living just went up, so what? Well, it's, you get it? I just want you to wrap your mind around how ridiculous that we're accepting this. We're tolerating this crap. We're tolerating tyranny. And I believe it was Thomas Jefferson that said, look, the degree of tyranny you live under is the degree you accept and tolerate. So that's what we're getting here. And, uh, you know, by not having a federal minimum wage that's the same across the board, that all states, we just shouldn't have a state minimum wage. We shouldn't have local minimum wage. It should be federalized so that we weren't splintered. We weren't divided as a nation. People felt free in their own nation to move around. They were not. And people that own their homes, people used to buy and sell their houses all the time. I want to move here. I want to move there. Now everybody's stifled. But, oh, I got my equity, so I'm going to go out and buy a new car and drive around my community in my new car. And I got my equity. My house went up in value. And that's always a good thing. Not talking about how that's burden. What one man's value is another man's burden that has to pay the price, the cost. Okay, that's burdensome. But no, it's your value, and that's growing value is always good. Not mentioning that growing burden is always bad, and there's a direct correlation there. God, we're so damn stupid, I think. Locally, they're complaining in the San Joaquin Valley of bumper crop of cherries, but not enough pickers. Well, they don't talk a word about what they're paying them, about what minimum wage would be now if uh, it was commensurate with what it, what uh, one dollar an hour was in terms of buying power back in the in the mid '60s. No, we're not going to have that discussion. So they're not the mainstream media is utterly remiss at educating the people properly. You know, maybe they need, the engineers need to focus on cherry-picking machines. I can imagine. You just use your mind for a second. Imagine, like, cherry pickers, like the kind they use to pull engines on a robot, you know, with little clippers, that, that, you know, with a camera, um, and they can go up there and they could just clip the, the cherries because cherries, if you've ever picked cherries, I've picked plenty of cherries in my life. But they, uh, little clusters, you know, you get uh, three, four, five on a, on a cluster of, of uh, and, you you know, you cut the whole thing and, and so it, uh, a machine could do it, you know, a little basket for them to drop into that's cushioned and, and then put them on a conveyor. I mean, you can imagine it's a start, but this is the kind of stuff in the future you're going to probably see that. People don't want to pick cherries in the hot sun for a couple of bucks an hour. I mean, you know, who can blame them? A woman uh, threw away, uh, everybody saw how outrageous, a bag full of puppies. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, that's funny because, you know, so many people, you couldn't pay them enough to do such a thing. You couldn't pay me enough to do that. It's a crime against nature. It's a crime against God. It's a crime against Americans. It's a crime <coughs> against decent humanity. Cute little puppies. God, I mean, could you imagine facing God saying, look, those puppies, I, I'm those puppies too. I mean, remember, God owns all the flora and all the fauna out there. It's God, man. The face of God is the face of a puppy. Do you understand? I, you want to mess with that? I don't think so. So, you know, and cherish all those things you wouldn't do for any amount of money. I, I, I love that. You know what I mean? I think about that a lot. I think, good God, when you really think about it, a good, decent, upright person has a whole giant laundry list of things they wouldn't do for any amount of money. And that's a beautiful thing in the sight of God. So cherish those things. Revel in those things. And pity all those that don't, you know, there's, they wonder. They say, well, I would do just about anything for money. A lot of people would kill, the gladly kill for it. Can you imagine that? Hey, the men out there, even some women, but they make me ashamed to be of the same species, of the same gender. I think, oh, my God, you're kidding me. So, you know, just remember that. You know, I wonder why so many of these people that profess to believe the, oh, the earth is overpopulated believe in vaccinations too they believe oh well we gotta stop this thing nip it at the bud they're big control freaks man there's this vaccination thing and still to this day they won't mention hey look if you're vaccinated what on earth are you worried about me being vaccinated it is none of your business by the way i got all my vaccinations in childhood i've had my measles and all that crap okay and you know something listen you do your own research because there's a lot of people out there and these are people that are researchers. These are experts that beg to differ with the supposed there's a consensus and nobody's in disagreement and all vaccines are all good. They're all 100% trustworthy all the time and that this is 100% constitutional that they can force vaccines and quarantine people and all this crap. It's all nonsense. And a lot of these people believe the earth's overpopulated. These health experts at the CDC and all this crap. And these are the people put, hey, look, if Mother Nature's maybe trying to tell us something here. I mean, if we got to thin the herd, then let Mother Nature do it with a new black plague or something. But they have to hear out of one side of these people mouths, the earth's overpopulated. We got to do something. We got to abort babies and. And we got to prevent overpopulating and, you know, teach them in colleges and universities about how to masturbate. To, you know, we got anything we can do, you know, uh, we've got to do to to keep people uh, from populating. But then we're going to push vaccines and tell people, oh, wow, it's bad to have this disease that apparently came from Mother Nature. Although they're often they vaccinate people with live viruses. Am I right? And so we know that anything that goes in the bloodstream comes out our pores. So these people might be spreading these, these, these this uh, measles, whatever, you know. So I, I, I'm just saying that possibility exists. God only knows. I don't know. I'm not an expert on these things. All I know is that experts do disagree. That there is no consensus that involves all the scientific community on these issues. That's a lie. And the mainstream media won't talk about that fact. They won't talk about the vaccine damage fund, this super fund that's set up. That if you are damaged by a chance by a vaccine, which does happen, people have won awards from this vaccine damage fund or it wouldn't exist. But you don't hear anything from the, from the mainstream media, but they're not trying to educate the public. That's not they're trying to diseducate, deeducate, disinform, malinform, misinform the public on stuff that keep them disempowered to muddy the waters. To convolute stuff, make stuff complicated and complex so it's overwhelming and it hurts people's heads so they don't want to think about it. It's take the path of least resistance, conform, comply, capitulate, go along with the system, accept your programming, accept your conditioning, accept your indoctrination. Just accept stuff on face value. Accept the unreality that we shove down your throat from birth. Don't ask whose planet is this anyhow. Don't you have a right to share in the intrinsic, inherent uh, resources of this planet for the brief time you're here we're all just passing through okay we might be dead today don't i have a right 
Uh, who, who's, whose choice is it? Whose decision is that? Is it God's or is it, you know, the Rothschild class? Okay? We all have a right to ask those questions.